Lesson 8.2b, Modeling Decimal, Fraction, and Percent Equivalencies. Using models, such as 10 by 10 grids, we can understand how decimal fractions and percents are related. If the amount is less than one whole, we only need one 10 by 10 grid. If the amount is greater than one whole, like a mixed number, we'll need more than one grid. Any decimal or percent can be written as a fraction with 100 as its denominator. And any fraction can be written as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. We'll see how to do that coming up. Any decimal can be written as a percent by multiplying it by 100 and inserting a percent symbol. So we'll see how to do these in the last part of this lesson. 8.2c. So here we're using a 10 by 10 grid to model decimal to fraction and percent. We have 28 hundredths, which as a fraction is 28 for the numerator and 100 as the denominator. We shade 28 out of 100 units, or 28% of the grid. We have 28 shaded out of a total of 100. To model a decimal, to mixed number and percent. We have 1 and 37 hundredths. We shade one whole grid for the 1 and 37 out of 100 units of a second grid or 137 units in all as 137 percent. To model a percent to decimal, we have 32 percent, which is 32 out of 100 it's 32 hundredths as 0 0.32, because that's the hundredths place. We shade 32 out of the 100 units. And to model percent to decimal for an amount that's more than 1, greater than 1, we have 125 percent. That's 125 hundredths. We have 100 hundredths as one whole, same numerator and denominator, plus an additional 25 hundredths that gives us 1 and 25 hundredths. Remember, we read the decimal point as and. We shade one whole grid for this one whole and 25 out of 100 units of the second grid. We have 1 and 25 hundredths. Here we have some 10 by 10 grids. We have one for problem A and we have these two for problem B. It's asking what decimal, fraction, and percent equivalencies are shown in each model. When we look, we know there's 10 going across in each row, so that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 out of 100. That's 60 hundredths. So we can write 0 0.60. We also know that this zero is unnecessary, isn't it, on the far right? We could also write this as 0 0.6 as 6 tenths because we could say it's actually 6 tenths. The same amount of area is covered in the same size grid. It's just that this is broken into tenths and this is broken into hundredths. See? As a fraction, we have 60 out of 100 which is also equal to 6 tenths. Show you a quick little trick. We could divide the numerator by 10 and the denominator by 10 to get 6 tenths, but because this ends in a 0 and this ends in a 0, we could just erase these two zeros at the end and get 6 tenths. As a percent, we have 60 out of 100. We have 60% is shaded in. Now here, we've got one whole, and we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45. We have 1 and 45 hundredths. As a fraction, well, it's actually going to be a mixed number, isn't it? We could write it as a 1 and 45 hundredths. And 
we can simplify this if we divide by the numerator and denominator's greatest common factor. We could divide them each by 5, and we get 1 and 9 fiftieths. As a percent, we have 145 shaded in. That would be 145 percent. So actually, this could also be 145 as the numerator and 100 as the denominator, couldn't it? If we made it a fraction greater than 1, this would be a mixed number. This would be the mixed number simplified, and this would be it as a fraction greater than 1. And as a percent, we have 145 percent. Remember to write all fractions in simplest form. We're finished with this lesson. We're going to move on to the last part of this lesson where we learn writing fractions as decimals and percents. I really hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I hope you understood all this, and I hope you'll join me for next time. Bye.